long before Scott Roeder shoots and kills Dr. George Tiller in his church on May 31, 2009, America had a long history of extreme violence against abortion providers and their employees. 1993, Dr. David Gunn is shot to death in Pensacola, Florida. 1994, two clinic workers are murdered in Brookline, Massachusetts. 1998, Dr. Barnett Slepian is gunned down by a sniper as he stands in his own kitchen in Buffalo, New York. In addition to three other murders, the National Abortion Federation reports that more than 200 American clinics have been subjected to bombs and arson since 1977. Those are acts of domestic terrorism which are intended to intimidate. So if I kill one doctor, maybe I'll intimidate a hundred doctors. My business is legal. Their business of anarchy is illegal. George Tiller was one doctor who could not be intimidated. He was one of just three physicians in the United States who specialized in abortions done in the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. He was uh, not shy about publicizing what he did, um, and he certainly never an apologist for what he did. So he was a, it was a love-hate thing. Very few people had no feelings regarding uh, Dr. Tiller. The first real flash of violence strikes in 1986 when a bomb is set off at the entrance to his clinic. We have had a major $100,000 bombing here in our organization, and one day later, we're in business. Five years later, starting in July 1991, Wichita is the backdrop to an event known by anti-abortionists as the Summer of Mercy. It was a huge event. It was carried on the national news media nightly. I don't think that Wichita wanted to be the focal point of the Summer of Mercy, but the truth of the matter is, is that you had one of the most notorious child killers in the world there, and that was the price that that community had to pay for having this demonic barbarian in their midst. We fear God, the supreme judge of the world, more than we fear any federal judge. In 1991, Randall Terry is the fiery leader of the anti-abortion group Operation Rescue, which organizes the demonstrations. Their goal is to disrupt and ultimately close George Tiller's clinic. Some people would chain themselves underneath a car. And the whole point was to buy time. As long as we were sitting in front of the, the doors of the abortion mill, he couldn't open. We were under siege the whole time. We had patients who would come in from uh, out of town, and the protesters wouldn't let them get through. Something that was legal, it felt like we were doing something wrong. There were over 2,500 arrests during the siege. It was a, a wonderful um, event. Just a lot of people letting the world know the abortion industry was put on notice that we were going to defend the unborn baby um, you know, until the law is changed. The volatile events of the summer of 1991 do not change any of the laws on abortion in the state of Kansas, and they do not force George Tiller to close his clinic doors and leave Wichita. His roots in the city are deep, going back more than a century. And while Dr. Tiller always aimed to practice medicine, he had never intended to specialize in abortion. Dr. Tiller's father, Jack Tiller, was a family physician in Wichita, Kansas, quite renowned. And Dr. Tiller himself went to medical school. He was a flight surgeon in the Navy when his parents and his uh, sister and brother-in-law got killed in an airplane accident. So Dr. Tiller came back to Wichita, and I think he was going to close the practice and, and somehow decided to stay and take over the practice, which was family practice. In 2000, Dr. Tiller is interviewed by the group Physicians for Reproductive Choice and Health. He explains what drove him to focus on abortion. Patients in the practice began to ask me if I was going to do abortions like my father did. <clears throat> and I was horrified. Why would these nice people say that he was scumbag-type physician? But the women in my father's practice 
for whom he did abortions, educated me and taught me that abortion is a matter of survival for women. He took care of patients and women and families that nobody else was able to take care of. Well, I think he was very sure of himself, you know, that this is the right thing. He was very determined. But Dr. Tiller's resolve is not enough to protect his clinic or himself from further violence. As I saw her pointed into the window and fired two shots, and it was silver, and then she turned and took off. In 1993, an anti-abortion extremist attacks Dr. Tiller as he's leaving work. It was 7 o'clock in the evening, and I think somebody comes up to hand me an anti-abortion booklet. And I thought, come on. And I was really pretty fired up, so I gave her the finger. The next thing I noticed, the bang, 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 bang. And then I was holding my arms. I thought to myself, that lady is shooting me with rubber bullets. I'm not afraid of rubber bullets. Then I looked down and there was blood all over the place. She shot him through the window and hit his left arm and also his right arm. The bullet went through both arms. The shooter is quickly arrested and identified as Rochelle Shelley Shannon, a woman authorities soon tie to bombings of other clinics. Shelley Shannon was a, a solid believer that violence was appropriate and that she was going to get the job done. She wasn't a very good shot, thank God. The doctor said recommended he take a few days off. He said, no, I'm going to work. I have patients. You know, I'm just like my patients. You know, last night I got shot and I was scared. But there was somebody there to take care of me. So the next day he just came in, his arms are bandaged, and just work as usual. He put up a big sign in front of his clinic that said, women need abortions and I'm going to do them. He felt they're le this is legal, it's an, a required service, and um, I'm going to do it. There was never any question in my mind that I was not going back to work the next day. I was going to work hell or high water. I am not going to be run over and I'm not going to be run out. It's just that simple. 